Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Melissa Wade in the water, and um, today is a very special day. We, we kind of do this every year because it's a very important topic that we want to talk about as well as to let you know more about, and that is um, foster care, becoming a foster parent. We know that there are so many kids that are out there, as they say, in the system, so to speak, who need that nurturing, they need that guidance, they need parents. And even more so, uh, when it comes to African-American kids, they need African-American parents. Um, and right now, we are very much in need of uh, lots of African-American parents to fill those gaps. So if I'm talking to you, if you're in a situation where you know either you can take on some more kids, you might have your own, or you might be in a situation where you're like, Melissa, I'm, I've had my own kids. Uh, I'm able to do so. Well, we're talking to you. If you know someone who is interested in it, and there are lots of people who have been interested in it and don't know exactly what to do. So every year we tag in with our friends there at Durham County Social Services to let us know, you know what they're in need of, maybe what the challenges are and how we can inform you on how to become foster parents. So joining us today, from Durham County Social Services is my sister and my friend, Miss Deborah Cousins. How are you doing, Deborah? Hi, Melissa. I'm well today and so thankful to see you. Ah, uh, same here. And of course, we have a, a foster parent who is joining us today. She and her husband um, adopted a, a teenager, which is one of those things that you very rarely hear, but we're going to get some, um, some, some words from her. Um, welcome, Miss Lisa Edwards. How are you? I'm fine, Miss Melissa. Thank you very much for having me today. Uh, glad to have you both on, ladies. Thank you so very much. We're looking forward to a very informative session. So, Miss Deborah, let's, let's start with you. Um, how has it been, you know, during this pandemic? We know it changes so many different things. So how has the pandemic kind of affected foster parenting and people becoming foster parents? Well, it didn't shut us down entirely. The recruitment of foster parents was for community events was shut down, but mm -hmm. getting the word out was not. We still had social media. Um, the good thing about during the pandemic, a lot of families watched old movies. I've had people to call the agency that said that I just saw instant family. I wanna know more about becoming a foster family. Mm -hmm. Or I just saw Anton Fisher for the first time. I wanna know more about becoming a foster family. So the pandemic having people shut in um, they got to watch more TV, more movies and streaming. Um, so I got calls that way. Other ways that I've got the word out is every store I went into, I took something about becoming a foster parent um, and knew I couldn't stay long. But, you know, just ask if you can read over this material, you know, your help is needed. Um, it has still been hard because currently May 1st, we had 303 children in care mm -hmm. and 275 of those children were African-American. Wow. So you think about that, 303 children in care, 275 in Durham County were African-American. So we definitely want to get that word out that we need your help. Absolutely. So so that's some of the need in Durham County as far as the number of kids as opposed to the number of parents that uh, you're being able to recruit. Are there other needs in Durham County that, you know, you can tell us about that maybe, you know, will enlighten us of how we can kind of solve this problem? Well, uh, most of the calls that I receive are for children age one to five. Mm -hmm. We need some people that are going to take in some older children some older children, some teens. Um, I had one lady to tell me, you know, seven, age seven is my cutoff. You know, what about the eight year old or the sibling group or the medically fragile child? Think about those children because they have all been through some type of trauma and we need someone that's gonna take the initiative to take in um, an older child. Well, with that said and done, um, as you said, uh, Miss Deborah, most people prefer those younger children between mm -hmm. one and five. Uh, but Miss Lisa Edwards is joining us right now, and she and her husband 
uh, decided to take on and foster a teenager. Can you tell me how you and your husband uh, decided on taking a teenager into your home, Miss Lisa? Um, yes, Melissa. So let me just say that when we first signed up to do foster care, I actually wanted an older child. I did not want a baby. Um, but our first child that we actually got came to us at 21 months old, which was um, a big surprise to us. Um, but we fell in love with her and we actually adopted her. She's now 10. Um, the next kids that we got in our home were all teenagers. Um, we had one teenager that happened that did not work um, because every placement is not going to be for you. And the first one was not. The second one, we got a very sweet 14 year old um, who is now getting ready to turn 21. Um, you know, so we've seen her grow up, become an adult, and we also got her sister at 12, who is now 17 and getting uh -huh. ready to graduate high school um, in a couple of weeks. So we're really excited. And though that placement was really good for us, um, it gave us an experience um, that we were looking for. We were looking for a, an older child because we're older and we did not want to do babies that, you know, you got to take baby right. diapers and all that stuff. I didn't want to go through diapers. Baby. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, the older kids were able to help us with the 10 year old. So um, it just helped out. Um, hopefully we've, you know, touch their life in a way that um, was meaningful to them, gave them some opportunities as teenagers to do some things that they may not have gotten to do in any other way. So um, we're just happy to be able to be a part. You know, Miss Lisa, I, I love this because as we can tell, you continue to do this over and over. So, you know, what advice can you give to those parents that are might be even thinking about it or what is it that compels you to continue to be a foster parent? Just to see the kids change. Because we've seen mm -hmm. them, you know, taking them into our home when they first came um, and how they changed by the time it was time for them to leave. Um, to see the growth. Because um, I think some of them came to us hopeless and, you know, confused about having to leave their home and the opportunities that they got and, and hopefully the love that they that we showed them um, that, you know, families can stick together. And just because their parents may have made some sort of mistake or something happened that they couldn't be with them, that, you know, they still were shown love and, and that there were people that really cared about them. Yeah. Wonderful. That That's a great story. Thank you so very much for sharing that with us. Uh, Miss Cousins, so, and I know many that are probably watching right now says, you know, so what do I have to have in order to become a foster parent? It, it, are there any specific qualifications? What are some of the things they need to do? I understand that your agency there at Durham County Social Services, you have a, a new computerized program that you all are using for foster care programs. Um, you can tell us what it's called and, and how does this benefit the foster parents or those wanting to be a foster parent to get into the program? Yes, yeah, Durham County has a program called Binti. Mm -hmm. Binti is a foster care program where people can go to the Durham County web website and click on the link that has Raise Hope Foster Dreams. It says you can press here, where you can click on that link and register yourself to take a mandatory orientation to learn more about becoming a foster parent. Um, that was added to make it um, easier for our families to um, to turn in their information. Um, it's also used for relicensing, keeping um, vital information that we need to know about those that are interested in becoming a foster parent. Wonderful. And for those that are not computer savvy, they can still call the 919-560-8092. Um, because we're here. We're here for those questions about becoming a foster parent. And you ask the question about what is needed. You right. need to just to provide a safe and loving, nurturing home, as Ms. Edwards said, someone that really cares about the quality of life of our children, someone that is going to take time to take our children places that they've never been, give mm. them opportunities to fulfill their dreams, um, just to give them hope. And that's something that I have seen Ms. Edwards do with people that she's fostered. And that's why I was so proud that um, she would speak on fostering a team. 
That's absolutely awesome. Well, ladies, this has been absolutely great, informative, lots of information and lots of love, Miss Edwards. We can tell, as Miss Cousins said, from you and your husband, just, you know, yeah. extending that 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 parental guidance and 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 nurturing and and that's what it's all about. So again, Miss Cousins, before you leave, let them know how important it is, how much you really need them to come and be a part of it, especially there. Durham County Social Services and a website or anything like that. Give that phone number once again of how they can get in contact with you all. Okay. If you have questions about becoming a foster parent, feel free to give us a call at 919-560-8092 or go to the Durham County Department of Social Services website. If you see the phrase or slogan that says raise hope, foster dreams, click on that website. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions about becoming a foster parent. Thank you so much. Miss Lisa Edwards, I don't want to forget. Uh, are there any last words that you would like to say for those who are thinking about doing exactly what you've been doing for years? So let me just speak out to our African-American families. Um, so we went to a foster event. Um, it's been a couple of years ago. And when we were leaving the event, one of my teenage girls said to me, she was so thankful that we looked like a family. Mm -hmm. And I had to think about what she was saying and why we were there. There were a lot of families where the kids were African-American and the parents were Caucasian. And she just felt like you couldn't pick us out from a regular family. And so I just want to reach out to those African-Americans. The kids really need us. And I, I really appreciate the, the Caucasian families stepping up and taking the kids, but the more kids that we can place with our African-American families, I think the better they will be. Um, just because we know their his we know their ethnic history and we can just foster them a little bit better in that way. Amen to that. I love it. Ladies, once again, Miss Cousins. Um, just give us that telephone number once again, and we'll leave it at that. And thank you all so very much for all the great information. And again, Ms. Edwards, the love, we can feel it, the love. Thank you. Call 919-560-8092. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Amen. We are praying for each and every one of y'all. As I can say, if you if this hit your, bump, your bone right now and said, hey, this is what I need to do, by all means, reach out. They need you. The kids need you. You can make a difference. Make that difference now by becoming a foster parent. We thank y'all all so very much for joining us. God bless you. I'm sure we'll be back next year nonetheless, but hopefully with more parents being enrolled. So make it happen now. Miss Deborah Cousins, thank you in Durham County Social Services. Miss Lisa, thank you for your testimony and sharing with us. Give our love to your husband as well. We will do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Everyone, um, until next time, God bless you. Grace and peace. Thank you.